so this was the problem uh, which i gave you yesterday no ma so here this hemisphere it is traveling with an acceleration of e and there is a mass of uh, small m present on this hemisphere so if this accelerates definitely we can say this body will move backwards so its initial velocity let it be u here then i am supposed to find out what is the velocity of this small m as a function of theta so after some time definitely i can say this body will reach up to here and its a tangential velocity will be v and if this is the initial position this has reached up to a position of angle theta so i am supposed to find out this velocity as a function of theta so definitely here very easily i can calculate this one by considering work energy theorem so first let us see how many forces are acting on this mass and due to these forces how many works are performed on this uh, mass so one force is uh, gravitational force is definitely acting another force is uh, normal reaction given by the hemisphere on the block that is also acting and i am solving this problem from accelerating frame of reference so pseudo force is also acting here so therefore if this is uh, m accelerating acceleration is in this direction so pseudo force will act in opposite direction this is the pseudo force clear now if i draw another diagram of this body initially body was present here finally body has reached up to here so if i draw this diagram this total length is r this is theta so this becomes r sin theta and this becomes uh, r cos theta if this total value is r and this is the h by which body has come down and h value we can already we have done an equation how to calculate this h value that is l into 1 minus cos theta here, here instead of l i can write r into 1 minus cos theta so therefore work done by gravitational force plus work done by pseudo force plus work done by normal reaction is equals to change in kinetic energy k final minus k initial so work done by gravitational force is how much so weight of this body is mg and it has come down by a distance of h which is equals to r into 1 minus cos theta so gravitational force and displacement are in the same direction so therefore work done by gravity should be positive so therefore mgh plus work done by pseudo force so pseudo force is acting in this direction and body is also displaced in the same direction by r sin theta here so therefore work done by pseudo force work done by pseudo force is how much so mass into acceleration into displacement is from here to here which is r sin theta and work done by due to normal reaction is always zero because normal reaction is always pushing the body in this direction but body is moving always perpendicular to the direction of normal reaction so angle between them is 90 so work done due to normal reaction will be always zero so this is equals to k final k final is nothing but half m v square and initial velocity is zero because it is here given initial velocity of this one is zero so m m and m i can cancel so therefore v square is equals to 2 into g h plus r into a into sin theta and h value already we have written which is equals to r into 1 minus cos theta so v square is equals to 2 into instead of h i can write r into 1 minus cos theta r into 1 minus cos theta plus r into a sin theta so therefore v is equals to square root of 2 into 2 into g into r into 1 minus cos theta plus r into a sin theta and here 2 is multiplied with these two terms so this should be my velocity of this small m uh, as a function of 
theta. That should be my answer. Okay, Sima. So this is a car in which a pendulum is hanging and this car is accelerating with an acceleration of A. Clear ma? Then this pendulum, it will bend by an angle of theta, no? So that angle I want to calculate for an acceleration of A. Mass of the bob is A, length of the pendulum is L. Clear? Come on. So here you can use work energy theorem. Ground frame. Ground ground frame nunchi kada ground frame nunchi just the pseudo force enduku ante sima here we are problem solving the problem from accelerating frame of reference only no then only we have to apply the pseudo force so initially before the starting of motion bob was in rest position clear so after some time what will happen it will be deflected by an angle of theta no now also to this observer, this bob is in rest position only. Understand? So initial kinetic energy is also zero. Final kinetic energy is also zero because we are solving the problem from non or accelerating frame of reference. Clear? Ma? Then how many forces are present and how many works are present on this one? So work done due to pseudo force plus work done due to gravitational force plus work done due to tension total should be equal to change in kinetic energy and change in kinetic energy is zero why change in kinetic energy is zero because initial velocity with respect to this observer and final velocity of the bob with respect to observer both are zero ah, he is definitely accelerating from the ground frame if you observe then this bob has an acceleration but observer is present inside this car, no? To this observer, the velocity of the bob, initial velocity and final velocities are zero. So total change in kinetic energy is also zero. That's all, Roma. So now, if I take this bob, so bob has displaced by an angle of theta, no? Clear? So then what is the height covered by this bob? Bob has covered up to a height of h. Then how can I calculate this h? Ah, h is equals to L into 1 minus cos theta. So therefore, work done due to gravitational force is how much? Force into displacement number. So minus mg into h. Why minus mg? Because gravitational force pulls this bob downwards. But Bob has displaced upwards no, by height of H. So angle between them is 180. Cos 180 is minus 1. So minus mg into and what is H value? L into 1 minus cos theta. So this is our equation number 1. Clear ma? Then what is the work done due to pseudo force? Ah. So this will be the displacement of the Bob no? And what is this displacement? If this is L, this value becomes L? Sin theta, this is L? Cos theta, pseudo force is applied in which direction? Acceleration is in this direction, no? So pseudo force will be in opposite direction. This is the pseudo force. Are you able to understand? Ma? So therefore, now pseudo force, is it positive or negative? Work done due to pseudo force is positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Because pseudo force in this direction, displacement is also in the same direction. So this if this is L, this becomes L sin theta. So therefore work done due to pseudo force is how much? Mass into acceleration into L sin theta. That's all, Lama. Then can you say what is work done due to tension? Zero. Zero. Why work done due to tension is zero? It is a centripetal force and centripetal force can never do work on a body because it is at an angle of 90 degrees. Clear? So then just substitute. So minus mgl into 1 minus cos theta plus work done due to tension is 0 and work done due to pseudo force is m into a into l sin theta. Totally it should be equal to 0 because change in kinetic energy is zero so can i cancel m and m so therefore minus gl into 1 minus cos theta plus a into l 
sin theta is equal to 0. I got equation up to here. But uh, with the help of this expression, I cannot calculate anything, no? I cannot calculate angle theta. Understand? So we have to convert this one into some another form. So let us see how I can... Con can I write GL into 1 minus cos theta is equals to A into L into sin theta? I can write number. Clear? Just I am taking to that side. Minus minus will get cancelled. So instead of 1 minus sin theta, I have a relation, no? 2 sin squared theta by 2. Do you remember this one? 1 minus cos theta by 2 is how much? Sin squared theta by 2. So 1 minus cos theta is equals to 2 sin squared theta by 2. So this is equals to... Huh? Mm, 2 sin square theta by 2. So next to uh, A into L, sin theta, how can I write in terms of uh, theta by 2? Sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta nama. Sin 2 theta value is 2 sin theta cos theta. Then sin theta, how can I write? 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. That's all. No? So therefore, 2 into sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. Why can't I write? <laughs> so let us see here. Shall I rub this one? Ma? This one. Okay. So we have this relation. No? Sin 2 theta is how much? 2 sin theta cos theta. Here 2 theta is becoming half in this one, in this one. No? Same analogy can't I use there? So, sin theta, I can write it as 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. That's why I have written like this. Clear? Now, what is the relation, can you say? So, GL into uh, 2 sin theta by 2 into sin theta by 2 is equals to, what is the equation on the other side? So, A into L into 2 sin theta by 2 into cos theta by 2. So sin theta by 2, sin theta by 2 gets cancelled. L, L also gets cancelled. 2, 2 also gets cancelled. Then tan theta by 2 is equals to A by G. Can I write like this? So therefore, theta by 2 is equals to tan inverse of A by G. Clear number? But I want theta, no? Theta is equals to 2 tan inverse of A by G. That is my answer. Have you understood? That's all. Clear, ma? See, ma, I will explain this question. So, this is a spring of a spring constant K. Clear? So from here, by applying some external force, I am lowering this mass. Clear? So how I am lowering very slowly, such that finally the mass is in rest position with respect to the spring. Clear? Then what I am doing, by applying some more force, I am lifting this mass again, so that the spring is again going to the relaxed position. So two works I am doing. First is work done for compression. Second one, uh, second one is work done for the spring to relax, to come into the normal position. Clear? So, work done in compression, I have to calculate. And work done in bringing back the spring to relaxed position. This also I have to calculate. Clear? So, spring constant of the spring is given, mass of the block M is given. Clear? Come on. Sima, what is meant by slowly lowered? Slowly lowered means? It means with the help of this applied force, we are not oscillating this spring. This force is not responsible for any oscillation. Just the spring is compressing, compressing, that's all. So initial velocity of the spring? Zero. After compression, final velocity? Zero. Total change in kinetic energy? Zero. So that is the meaning of this one. Clear, ma? Okay. So, here one thing which I can say is that after compression, 
after spring has completely compressed. Can I say mg is equals to kx? Ah, mg is equals to kx, I can say, no? What is meant by mg? Weight of this block. What is kx? Spring will compress by x value, no? Then it will develop a restoring force of kx of is equals to minus kx, no? Hooks law. So therefore, x value is how much? mg divided by k. So this is our equation number one. The compression produced in the spring is this much, mg divided by k. Clear? Now, let us do first one, work done by external force for compression. Clear? So how many forces are present and how many forces are doing work in this condition? Can you see? Hmm. How many, what are they? Oh, one is work done due to gravitational force. Another work is work done due to spring also present. No, spring is also giving force, no? So totally two forces are present and two forces will perform work in this condition. Clear, ma? So work done due to gravitational force plus work done due to spring force should give the change in kinetic energy. And change in kinetic energy in this condition? Zero. Zero. Because initially and finally velocity of the spring is zero, no? Yes, okay. Then can you say what is work done due to gravity in this condition? Work done due to minus, ah, minus mg na plus mg na. Minus. Weight of mg is acting downwards, no? Body is also compressed downwards. So definitely plus mg into x. Are you able to understand ma? Weight of this body will act in which direction? Downwards direction, no? And compression is also in the downwards direction. So plus mg into x. So here we forgot another force. What is that one? Work done due to external force is also there, no? Because I am holding this block and I am releasing this mass slowly. Huh? Work done due to external force must be present, no? We are not releasing this block. We are holding this block and releasing the block very slowly. So work done due to external force plus work done due to gravitational force plus work done due to spring force. Clear? And uh, can you say what is work done due to spring force? Minus kx. Mm. Minus half kx square, no? Why, why, why minus half kx square? Why minus? <laughs> ah, spring is compressed downwards. Then spring will give force in? Opposite direction. So therefore, minus half kx square should be equal to zero. He is asking work done due to external force number. So W external is equals to how much? Half kx square minus mg x. X value is how much? X value already we have calculated. No, mg divided by k. So half into k into m square g square divided by k square minus mg into x value is mg divided by k. That's all, no? Okay. So, k and square gets cancelled. So, w external is equals to how much? Uh, m square g square divided by 2k minus m square g square divided by k. So, finally, what is the answer? W external is equals to minus half m square g square divided by k na 2k na k or I can write divided by 2k. So this is my answer. Are you able to understand? So work done due to external force I got positive answer or negative answer? Negative. negative. So correct or not? Why it is correct? Because external force to hold this block I have to apply upward force. no? But block is moving downwards, so definitely negative work. That we have proved by minus symbol also here. Are you able to understand? Come on. So can you calculate this one? Again, what is the work done in bringing this block so that uh, spring is again come, uh, will come to the relaxed position? Clear? So next, work done for relaxation. Okay. Hmm, bringing back to the normal position or relaxation. Anything we can write. Clear ma? 
So here also same condition, no change in kinetic energy should be zero. Slowly I am raising the block. So that initial and final velocities of the spring is zero. Clear? So again same relations. Now, can you say what are the changes which can apply here? So this will be positive, no? Spring will do positive work. Because as you uh, take the mass upwards, restoring force is always upwards, no? Spring also relaxes in the same direction. And what about uh, mg into x? This will become minus. So uh, everything is same. So just what can we change? So this will be minus, this will be plus. So everything is common, so there I will get plus. Plus m square g square divided by 2k. That's all. Remaining all the steps you can calculate. Clear now? Same, I will explain this question. So this is a smooth surface on which this capital M is present. Clear ma? So consider this is a plank of mass capital M. And on this one there is a block of small m. And this block is given a velocity of u with respect to the ground. What is this velocity? Velocity with respect to the ground. Clear ma? And by the time it reaches to this end, both these plank and mass, they are moving with a common velocity. Are you able to understand? Why they are moving with a common velocity? Because there is coefficient of friction between these two. Co the coefficient of friction be between these two uh, block and plank is how much? Mu. So by the time it reaches here, now both the plank and the mass, they are traveling with a common velocity. Then we are supposed to find out in how much time these two blocks will move with a common velocity and what is that common velocity. Clear? Second question is, what is the work done by the friction on small m? Third question is, what is work done by the same friction on capital M? Clear? That's all. That is our question. Shall we solve? Okay. Sima here, this is the velocity of small m with respect to ground, no? So we will try to solve the problem with respect to observer present on the ground. Clear? Okay. Sima, if this block is uh, sliding on this capital M, what is the force acting on uh, small m? Kinetic friction, no? Kinetic friction is acting. Clear? So, small m is moving in this direction with the initial velocity of u. As it is sliding, kinetic friction will act in opposite direction. Clear? And what is the formula for kinetic friction? Mu into n, no? What is the normal reaction in this condition? Nothing but uh, weight of this uh, small m, mg. So mu into mg. So this uh, mu into mg uh, is the opposite force, no? So only force which is acting on small m is mu into mg. No other force is present. So this mu mg will become the net force. That's all, no? Mu mg becomes f net. F net formula? Mass into acceleration. So cancel these two. Then what is the acceleration produced? Mu into g. So this is the acceleration of small m. Clear? Acceleration of only which one? Small m only. Clear? Okay. Now, observer is observing this block from here, no ma? So what is his initial velocity? U. So after reaching other end of this capital M, it will have a common velocity of let common velocity be V. Are you able to understand? Then how can I write a relation between V, U, A and T? No, v is equals to U plus A T. So V is equals to U plus A T. I will use this relation. That's what I am trying to calculate. Time also we are supposed to find out now here. Okay. So let us. See. So final velocity let it be V. Clear ma? Initial velocity is how much? U. Acceleration is how much? Minus mu g or plus mu g? Minus mu g. Why minus mu g? Because body is moving in one direction. Acceleration is acting in opposite direction. Speed of this body will definitely reduce. So minus. And time taken is t. So let it be equation number 1. Clear ma? So what is the frictional force? Mu mg no? Same friction will be acting on? 
capital M also, that's all. No? Because what is the force present between small m and capital M? Only frictional force is present. Understand? But what is the direction of friction on capital M? Ah, on capital M, friction is acting in this direction. That's all, no? Because on this small m, friction acting in one direction. On capital M, friction should be acting in opposite direction. And what is the value of friction here? Mu into mg. So this mu into mg will become the net force on capital M. Capital M into acceleration of capital M. Then what is the acceleration of capital M here? Mu mg divided by capital M. Are you able to understand? Okay. So this is the only pulling force on capital M, no? Is there any other force? No. Surface is also smooth here. So, the friction between this capital M and surface is zero, no friction. So, therefore, only force which is acting on capital M is friction. So, friction becomes the net force. Net force formula mass into acceleration. So, acceleration of capital M is mu mg divided by m. Are you able to understand? Okay. Now, here also I can use the same relation, no? V is equals to u plus at. Can I use? Hmm? Okay. Now, to this observer, can you say what is the initial velocity of capital M and what is the final velocity of capital M? Observer present on the ground. This observer only is seeing these two blocks, no? So, with respect to this observer, what is the initial velocity of capital M? Zero. Final velocity? Final velocity is V, no? Because after a time of t, both of them are moving with common velocity V. That's all, no? So, therefore, what can I write? Final velocity is V only. Same velocity for uh, small m and capital M also. Initial velocity is zero. Acceleration is how much? Mu mg divided by capital M into T. So, this is my equation number two. And here, uh, plus A or minus A? Hmm? Plus A. Why plus A? Because this... Uh, uh, frictional force it is pulling block in this direction no? body is also displacing in the same direction are you able to understand so what are the two equations i got here this is my first equation this is my second equation so if i equate these two can't i calculate time okay then time you substitute in one of the equations you will get final velocity also are you able to understand try to solve first write down up to here then we will see Okay, so uh, just I can equate these two equations, no ma? Here also I have V is equals to U minus mu G into T. There also I have V value. So equating 1 and 2. So equating 1 and 2. What I will get? U minus mu G into T is equal to mu mg divided by capital M into so, T if I take a common, then I will get mu mg by capital M plus mu g is equal to u. So, therefore, T is equals to uh, T into mu mg plus mu capital mg is equals to m into u. So, therefore, T is equals to m into u divided by mu g if I take a common then m plus m. This is the relation which I got for time taken. Clear? Ma? So similarly I can calculate uh, equation for uh, velocity. Final velocity also I am supposed to find out. Nama. So uh, which equation shall I take? I will take second equation. So final velocity is equals to mu mg divided by capital M into T. So V is equals to mu mg divided by capital M into time. Time relation is M into U divided by mu G into M plus M. So M, M, mu G, mu G gets cancelled. So V is equals to m u divided by m plus m. 
this is find out second condition number work done by friction on small m so work done i can calculate by force into displacement also okay but as it is taking very lengthy process i will calculate by work energy theorem okay so what is work energy theorem so work done due to friction is equals to change in kinetic energy why i am taking only because of work done due to friction because friction is the only force present on small m no there is no other force are you able to understand ma is there any other force acting on small m gravitational gravitational force cannot act because gravitational force is acting downwards but body is moving horizontally so work done due to gravity will be zero so only force any force act at the end of the force ah yes many forces are gravitational force is also acting but gravitational force cannot do any work in this condition are you able to understand ma for this small m mg is acting downwards no but body is moving in which direction in this direction angle between them is how much 90 cos 90 value is zero so gravitational force cannot do any work only friction can do some work are you able to understand so this is equals to change in kinetic energy so what is change in kinetic energy what is final kinetic energy half mv square no initial kinetic energy half mu square so work done by friction is equals to half m if i take a common v square minus u square so half m into and uh, what is the final velocity i got m square u square divided by m plus m whole square minus u square that's all ma so half m into just solve this equation that should be our answer clear come on so m square u square minus u square into m plus m whole square divided by m plus m whole square so we are supposed to solve this relation clear so half m into so what is the relation i have m square u square minus u square into if i take uh, if i expand this one m square plus m square plus 2 m into capital m divided by m plus m whole square so half m into m square u square minus uh, m square u square minus m square u square minus 2 m m u square divided by m plus m whole square so m square u square these two gets cancelled so minus half m if i take a common then it is m square u square plus 2 m into capital m into u square divided by m plus m whole square and further i can take uh, half m uh, this is capital m no i can take u square also common this is capital m no no capital m eh? this one after squaring clear and i can take uh, one capital m also common then u square plus 2 into small m u square i have already taken common uh, one plus oh here m square will be there here m plus uh, 2m divided by m plus m whole square this should be our answer same that's all no? so this is the work done due to friction on small m clear so minus half m m u square into m plus 2m divided by m plus m into whole square that should be our answer so now let us see work done by friction on capital m also 
So capital M, that is the Planck initially, it was in rest position, so its initial kinetic energy is zero. So work done by friction and the gravitational forces are not doing any work on the motion of this body. So work done by friction is equals to Kf minus Ki also I can write. So work done due to friction is equals to half capital M V square minus zero. So work done by friction is equals to half into capital M into and what was the final velocity relation I got? Small m into u divided by m plus m whole square. So therefore half into capital M into uh, m square u square divided by m plus m whole square. So this is the equation for work done by the friction on capital M.